Welcome everybody to another episode of John's Demo Room. I'm John with Ivy AT, and today we're going to be taking a look at a piece of software from Dolphin. This is Supernova. What it is, it's a screen magnification and screen reader software. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive down. I'll share my screen with you and you can see how it works. All right, so here we are up close with the Supernova control panel. So this is where you're going to find all your different settings and features that you can turn on for Supernova. So I'm just going to kind of quickly go through these real quick and just show you some of the highlight ones. And I won't kind of show you everything because that would take a little while, but I'll kind of give you the basics and show you the cool features that the Supernova has. So before I get too much into the control panel and showing you the features, I do want to point out that there's actually three different versions of Supernova that you can get depending on your needs. So First of all, there's just a magnifier version, and that's going to just have just simply magnification, no speech settings or anything like that. Then there's magnifier and speech, which is a magnifier with some speech assistance, I would say. Um, so essentially, it doesn't have a full screen reader built into it, but it has speech assistance, so it can do things like uh, you know, you'll read you a document or a web page, character echo, things like that. Not a full-blown screen reader, but just speech assistance. And then there's also magna uh, Supernova Magnifier and Screen Reader, which is what I have here today. And this one actually has all the magnification, full screen reading capabilities, as well as Braille output. So you'll notice that these are actually kind of broken down by tabs on the control panel. So this is the visual tab. It has my magnification features. Then there's the speech tab here. This has all my speech settings on it. And I have a Braille tab. This is for Braille output if I want to you know, use a uh, braille display for braille output with like you know my screen reader or something like that you can do it and there's also a media tab which has just a few extra features and you do get that um, that comes for free with the uh, the uh, supernova magnifier and speech and uh, magnifier and screen reader so let's go ahead and go to our visual tab go ahead and get started and just kind of go through these real quick so on this main control panel here these are just kind of your quick access settings so there are more detailed settings you can get into to really customize supernova to be exactly how you want um, but what they've done is they've kind of just put big, nice icons here on this control panel for like the, the more commonly used things that you might want to change a lot or might want to adjust or you kind of just need a user-friendly place to get at those quickly and easily. Um, but if you needed to, you can also go up either to one of these like a visual menu, speech menu, braille menu, um, or underneath the different options here, like underneath our magnifier view, for example, there is a little drop down where you can get to some more options as well. So those are the two ways to get into like more detailed settings for this but we're just going to go ahead and go through this is just a simple just the main control panel and the features that are on the front here so first of all we have our magnifier um, we're on the visual page and we have a magnification icon or magnifier style icon and this is for turning on and off your magnification so you click on that to turn your magnification on or off then over to the right of that, we have a big plus and minus button to zoom in or out. And it shows you the level of zoom here in this little window too. So right now we're at five times zoom. And you click the plus to zoom in, the minus to zoom back out to whatever level works best for you. Moving on here, we have our magnifier view. And so right now you'll notice that the entire screen is magnified. So essentially I have a magnified, or I'm more focused kind of in on a certain area of my desktop. And it actually tracks my mouse pointer as I go around, I go down to my start menu here and kind of show you. I have essentially a full screen magnification that is tracking my mouse pointer around my computer. So that's kind of the default view, but you can adjust that. There are a variety of other options as well. So if I click on this magnifier view here, you'll notice this is a fixed window. So you'll notice no matter where I move my mouse around, even though the magnification inside the fixed window is following my mouse cursor, my actual window doesn't move. So I could place this window anywhere on my desktop that I want. Like say, uh, if I wanted a little bit more out of my way of most of the stuff I'm doing, I could put this in the upper right hand corner of my screen. Um, there's controls to actually adjust where it's placed. Um, but anyway, or you could place it wherever you want, you know, uh, anywhere on your screen. And it's just a fixed window that stays there, but it gives you more of a overall experience of your desktop. And then you can just use your mouse pointer to actually track around to the place that you want to see. And it will show it magnified within that fixed window. Clicking on the magnifier view again, we also we have a um, essentially kind of more like a magnifying glass style. Essentially, wherever you move your mouse, the entire window, magnified window, follows. But you still get the overall view of your desktop. You just have a magnified window that tracks your mouse around the screen. Of course, as you adjust the magnification, it adjusts that magnification inside the window only. So moving on here, we click on this again. This is a resizing magnifying glass. Uh, I would probably say this is mostly for people who are navigating with a keyboard because as I navigate around, let's say I'm going to press tab real quick, you notice that the magnifier size actually adjusts to the item that I was on. 
So last item I was on was square, and I'd press tab down to a little view drop down menu. Um, and now it's um, like more uh, like more of a long rectangle over the view uh, drop down area. So this one actually changes size and shape um, depending on the item you're on. So I would say this would be really good for somebody who uh, wants uh, magnification uh, with with uh, more navigation using a keyboard rather than a mouse. So let's click on this again here. Now we have split screen. So the left hand side of my screen is magnified as where the right hand is not. So essentially I can have half my screen magnified and then I can use the other half of my screen that's not magnified to kind of get a bigger, a better overall perspective of my, of, my, of my computer's desktop. So if I click on this again, it will split screen and have the top half of your screen magnified and the lower half not magnified. Again, I have the right hand side magnified and the left hand side unmagnified. Again, click on it again, and I have the bottom half of my screen magnification with the top half of my screen showing no magnification. And if I click on it one more time, I am back to full screen magnification. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in full screen magnification because that's my preference, but um, it's totally customizable to individual preference, kind of however you want, whatever works best for you. So moving on here, we have our color schemes. So there's just a nice big color scheme button to you can click to turn on or off your high contrast mode or color scheme or color mode, whatever you want to call it. So right now I think I have um, inverted colors here. Let me take a look. I can go click on the enhancements drop down and I can look through the list of different high contrast modes. So I have inverted brightness right now. So you notice it kind of inverted all the brightness or the colors on my computer. Um, I can also do like a negative, which would be more like this. Um, let's go take a look at some of these other ones real quick. Um, I have high contrast white on black, grayscale, uh, high contrast black on white, and there's a whole laundry list of other contrast streams as well, like yellow and blue, yellow on blue, green on black, white on blue, white on green. There's a bunch of them different in here. They even have one called psychedelic. Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show it just for fun. Uh, that that is just I I don't know who actually want to use that, but they have one called psychedelic and it's all pinky and stuff. So, all right, let's go ahead and pick something a little more reasonable. I'm gonna switch it to grayscale here. And you'll notice that everything on my computer is now switched to grade scale. So this is great for um, helping for reading and all kinds of stuff. And you can just simply turn this on or off when you want it. Of course, you can leave it on all the time as well. Um, I'm not actually going to use a high contrast mode, so I'm going to turn it off. But once you've essentially picked your high contrast mode from this menu here, you just simply click on this button to turn it on or off. There's also highlighting as well. So highlighting, what this is going to do is like if you're typing in a document, it can highlight where you're typing um, or it can highlight as it reads. So if you have one of the uh, versions that have speech um, and it can read like a document or a web page or email, what, what have you allowed, um, you can have it so that there's a highlighter that tracks as it reads. Um, and this is the highlighter feature. And you can simply turn that on or off depending on whether you're not you want it. Um, there's also a mouse pointer here, so this is where you can customize your mouse pointer. So I just have mine as a large white one, um, but you can adjust this to whatever you want. They have a few schemes kind of pre-built um, that people might like. So they have like a large red mouse pointer, a large white, large yellow. So let's say for example we click on the large red one, we can press apply to apply it, and then you'll notice my mouse pointer is now large and red. You could also create your own custom scheme if you want to as well. So we could click on new and we'd add our own new scheme. Um, and then we can actually choose like between normal select, help select, working, busy. So you know like all those different mouse pointers that pop up. Like if you click on something and it's taking a second to load, you get that little waiting symbol that pops up. You can actually customize those to different sizes and different high contrast and all kinds of things. I'll show you down here below. Um, there's a whole bunch of different colors and sizes that you can and shapes that you can pick depending on what you like best. Uh, you can also adjust the mouse pointer size. So I have mine at two right now, but you can adjust it to whatever size you want. So if you need it larger or smaller, you can actually do that. Um, down here is where you can actually choose the mouse pointer that you want. So right now I have this one selected, which is just a large red one, but I could actually go through and there is a whole bunch of different ones in here. There are different type, uh, sizes and shapes and things like that, kind of depending on what I want. So I can customize this to be whatever I want right there. Let's say if I want, I want to help select here. I click on help select. You'll notice down here where those mouse pointers were. It shows me a variety of different help select options too. There are different colors and sizes and things like that. So you can completely customize virtually everything about your mouse pointer that you want. Uh, moving on here, there's line view, and what this does is if you're reading a document or a web page or something like that, it actually will scroll it across your screen for you um, in large print. It kind of just, it takes over the whole screen and just scrolls it along the bottom. It's kind of nice um, if you're trying to read, and it, you can choose like the rate of like how fast it passes along your screen and things like that. Um, there's a document reader here. 
So if you have like a document or a book or something like that on your computer that you would like to read using Supernova, you can use a document reader to open it up and have it in large print, high contrast, or have it read aloud to you if you have a version with uh, screen reading capabilities as well. And Connect and View, I'm actually going to come back to this. Um, at the end, I'm going to zoom out with the camera and show my computer um, because Supernova works beautifully with touch screen controls. It is really, really cool, but since I'm showing you my full screen here at the moment, um, I'm going to have to back out and kind of uh, get a shot of my computer so I can show you how the touch screen works and the gestures work. So I'm going to come back to this connect and view, but essentially what it is is that um, it's twofold. Either you can connect um, a HD webcam in and use it as a basic CCTV. Um, it allows you to do that and it will split screen your computer so half of it will be showing the webcam and half of it will be showing your magnified computer and then anything under the webcam can be magnified or changed to a different high contrast mode or you can actually take a picture of it if you want to save it into your computer for like notes or something um, or you can even uh, OCR it uh, and have it read aloud to you as well. Um, Supernova does have OCR built into it so any documents that aren't accessible or even if you scan in or something like that you can actually use the OCR capabilities built in here for that inaccessible document to be made accessible and read aloud to you. Um, also, in addition to that, uh, Connect View also works as a, a way to wirelessly view like a, a teacher or a presenter's computer or someone else's computer. So let's say, let's use a classroom for example. Um, if you're in a classroom and the student is hooked up, um, you can put a, a free utility on the teacher's computer and in no way, in shape, in no way shape, or form affects um, how, the, how anyone sees the teacher's computer, but what it does is it split screens your computer and shows you either half your computer or you can full screen it too. Um, it shows the teacher's computer but magnified and on your end of things, on your computer or whoever, the student, whoever is using the computer with Supernova, they can do things like zoom in, they can, um, they can snapshot for taking notes, uh, they can OCR, all that kind of stuff. They can actually um, you know, write or track down notes. Um, and again, I'll show you how this also uh, kind of ties into the touchscreen features too in a little bit. Um, but essentially what it allows you to do is wirelessly view a teacher or a presenter's computer without the need for like a distance view CCTV in a classroom or something like that. So really, really cool, really cool feature. Um, I will, um, again, I'll break that out later on here when I show you the touchscreen capability. So that's it kind of for the basic um, magnifier view here. So let's go over to speech and we'll just kind of breeze through this. So you just click on the lips icon here and this turns your speech on or off here. You can adjust the volume as well. You can adjust the speed here, character, echo. So this would be like when you're typing. Uh, you can choose to have it echo characters or echo words or echo characters and words. So as I'm typing, uh, let's say, you know, if I type like the letter A and I press spacebar, it will say A. You know, if I type letter B and I press spacebar, it will say B. Or if I write the word, you know, uh, T-E-S-T -E and then press spacebar, it will read you back the word test. Um, so you can have it echo characters or not. Um, you can have it echo if you want characters, each character, or even or just words if you prefer words instead. Um, that way you get a little uh, voice feedback when you're typing. Okay. Um, you can also change some text style things here as well. So if we open this up, um, you can have it do things like um, if you have, depending on your screen reader or screen or the speech capabilities you've got, um, you can have it do things like announce like uh, certain uh, things on your computer. So like, for example, if like a, there's a color change uh, in the text or if there's a capital, you can have it tell you if something is capitalized or not. Uh, announce whether there's blank lines. There's a whole bunch of check boxes on here essentially that you can choose what information is read aloud to you. So maybe you don't want it to tell you that, you know, when you are reading a document or typing a document, maybe you don't want it to be like, it's underlined, it's capital, it's, you know, you know in blue font, it's, you know, all, you know, maybe you don't want it to read you a hundred different things when you're just typing one word. So you can kind of essentially choose in here what information you do or don't want it to read aloud to you. So let's go ahead and close that there. I uh, have general announcements too here, and this is kind of things like uh, announce like um, if there's changes in the Braille, announce if there's no focus detected. So like if you're using it, like if you're tapping around using the screen reader, if like it can't detect a focus, um, you can have essentially there's just a bunch of different options here. You, again, this is all choosing how much speech feedback you want. And then we also um, here we have this read from here option. And this is like if you want to read like a document or a web page or an email or something like that, you can go to the top of the email, um, put your cursor there, and then you press uh, read from here, or there's a keyboard shortcut for it as well. Um, and you press it, and then it will just read that document or web page to you. And then when it's done, it stops. So maybe if you don't want a screen reader on or you don't need a screen reader capabilities all the time, but maybe you just like you know a web page or an email read aloud to you, you can go ahead and click on read from here or press the keyboard shortcut, and it will just read that aloud to you.
There's also a little help menu at the end of each one of these as well. And there's also Braille output here, and it's kind of similar to the speech menu in a lot of ways, except for it all applies to the Braille output on a refreshable Braille display. So you can turn Braille output on or off. Um, you can also, if you have a, um, a Braille display that has a, like a Perkins style keyboard on it or something, and you're actually going to be inputting from the Braille display, you can configure that here as well. Um, you can change what you want to do with your status cells. Um, you can choose um, a whole bunch of different character options here, like whether you want it to show in Braille if something's underlined or bold or italic or and so on and so forth. So you can really customize, you know, maybe like if you're using the screen, re screen reader and Braille output, like maybe um, you would want like the Braille to show more information, like um, you don't want it to speak that something's underlined and capitalized, but maybe uh, it at least could show it in Braille. So if you need to reference the Braille, but you don't want it to be talking quite so much, you can kind of configure it to work like that. And there's a few different layout options that kind of have to do with your formatting of your Braille, um, some cursor settings, verbosity control um, that also controls how much information is given. Um, you can also have it show an on-screen Braille, uh, refreshable Braille as well. It pops up a little banner at the top um, and shows you that. And then you also have a help menu here. Moving on to the media tab here. This is kind of like, um, I, I don't know, it's like the bonus features. Um, so this has scan and read, and that's what I was talking about, the OCR capabilities. So you could either connect a scanner or um, import a like an inaccessible file off your computer or something like that. Scan something in, take a picture with a webcam. Anyway, you could bring all of it in. You could do from a file, from a scanner, or from a clipboard if you have something copied to the clipboard. And then um, Supernova can actually OCR it for you and either bring it up in its book reader or it can actually open it inside Microsoft Word as well. So maybe it's if it's text or a worksheet or something you want to scan in and edit or modify, you could actually do that. Then they have a book section here. And you can go in and you can download books on here. Um, like you can access uh, things like Bookshare, NFB Newsline, things like that. I don't actually, I'm not actually signed in anything at the moment. Um, so I can't really show you any books, but um, you can access a whole bunch of those different books or Daisy books and you can even uh, uh, export them to like, like a daisy player or something from Supernova as well. You also have RSS feeds for news. You have some internet radio stations and some podcast options as well. And then there's a help menu. So that's essentially the kind of a quick overview of Supernova and its different features. Uh, like I said, there is a lot more customization that can be done, but they don't put it all right on the main control panel just because that would just be a lot of settings. But you can go into the visual menu here, for example, turn highlighting on or off. You can choose the highlighting color if you wanted to. You can adjust the mouse pointer, dock reader settings. Anyway, they have a lot more features inside the menus that you can get at for more customization. Uh, you can even have it like, say, for example, um, have a different high contrast mode that only turns on when you have a specific program open. Um, it's very customizable like that. So um, the last thing I want to show you is um, as a quick reference for keyboard shortcuts, if in the help menu here, you have a supernova hotkey option and it shows you all the different supernova control fan, um, keyboard commands. So I admittedly, I don't have them all memorized yet because there's kind of, kind of a lot of them. But anyway, if you go and you go to a, it breaks it down by section like magnification, speech, uh, text input, that kind of thing. So let's say, for example, um, we want to do uh, magnifier and then we can look here. Um, color scheme on and off is left shift plus left alt plus C. Um, connect and view on or off left shift plus caps lock zero. Um, you know, anyway, it gives you all the different keyboard shortcuts all listed in here. So in case you ever did want to learn what keyboard shortcuts um, you know were and you know to be a little more proficient, you could actually do that. All right, so I just switched over real quick just to kind of an outside view of my computer so that you can see what I do. Um, I just want to show you uh, the touchscreen capabilities of Supernova. So this is something that is really, really neat. And if you go buy virtually any laptop nowadays, they're all touchscreens now. So a really, really cool way that you can use that touchscreen in conjunction with Supernova is that everything on screen, you can just touch and pan around. So this gives you really easy, fast navigation like that. You can do things like pinch and zoom with two fingers like you're accustomed to on like a tablet. You just pinch in, pinch out to zoom in or out, touch different icons to turn settings on or off. Just like that, it just makes the whole user experience for a touchscreen really, really fast and really fluent. On top of that, I can also tap on the screen with three fingers like this, and I pop up a little simplified control panel down here so I can do things like if I lost the dolphin menu uh, control panel, I can click on the dolphin logo here, and it'll pop that control panel back up for me. Little help menu, turn my high contrast on or off just like that. I can also turn my magnifier on or off, zoom in, zoom out. Of course, I can also do the pinch and zoom just with my fingers there as well. But I can also do like step, uh, jump in, zoom in, like just like that. 
um, read from here. So that's that feature I told you about that will read you like a document or a web page and then stop. Also, if you have a speech capabilities, you can click on the mouth or lips icon and it will actually turn speech on or off. And then lastly, all these touchscreen interfaces, they all have uh, keyboards, but all of the like on-screen keyboards have little tiny buttons and stuff like that. So they built in a nice high contrast on-screen keyboard here for you. You can also adjust the high contrast color of this too. Right now I have black on yellow, but if I click on the number pad here and then click on the high contrast button, I can cycle through a few different high contrast mode um, options for my keypad here. So just like that, if I want to go away, I press the X. If I want to hide this little menu bar here, I just tap on the screen again with three fingers and that goes, that just disappears for me. And I'm back and I can navigate around. I can switch between this. I can, you know, use my mouse pointer here if I want to, or switch back and forth between, you know, touch screen or not. And it just gives a nice fluid, easy to use, easy to pan around, especially if you're using keyboard shortcuts to zoom in and out for different font sizes and things like that. Just pinching and zooming, uh, especially with all the new tablets and stuff like that nowadays, um, that's just a really, you know, standard touchscreen gesture and it's just very intuitive to be able to, oh, you know, I need to zoom in on this. I just grab and zoom in just like that. Anyway, I just want to show you that real quick. That's all there is to the touchscreen. So let's go ahead and jump back out to FaceTime. All right, everybody, that does it for Supernova today. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like more information on Supernova, make sure to visit us online at www.iree-at.com. Um, I'll also leave a link down below in the description of this video to our website as well with Supernova. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. As always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.